The easiest way to make your code better is to use utility functions. Utility functions are helper functions that do a small thing and do it well. I usually build my code bases around a lot of utility functions and then I have larger classes and functions that are using those utility functions. It is the Unix philosophy that you have a lot of reusable components that you can reuse and mix together. I even have my own library in Python and Go with utility functions that I keep reusing in multiple projects. And I'll reveal what I put in one of those libraries in the end of the video. But first, let's take an example to see how we can improve something with utility functions. We have some functionality here to clean names. Now you can see here that we have four name in names, which is pretty simple. And then we have the name, we strip it, then we check if there is actually something, and then we make a title. And if it's a good guy, then we will add it. Now this is pretty straightforward code, but there's a lot of nesting in. And if you would add more checks to this, or you would want to test it, it's very hard to understand actually what's happening and guarantee what is happening. A better approach would be to make a clean name function. So let's do that. We have here a clean name function that first strips the name and then we check and then we return none if there's none. And then we afterwards make it titleized and then we check if the title is Google and then we return it at the end. And at the end we have a for loop in form of a list comprehension in Python, where we take each name and we return only the ones where it's not none. The code is a little bigger and if this was just a one time case, I wouldn't change this here. But a lot of times you would probably want to reuse this functionality. You can imagine this being used in many different places. This code is a lot easier to read. You might have a little problem with the uh, list comprehension because that's Python specific, but you can imagine that's just like a for loop. With this here, it's very easy to reuse the function and it's also a pure function. That means that it's very easy to unit test. A pure function is simply something that receives some input and always return the same output depending on the input. In other words, it's not depending on any state. These are ideal to build your code bases around because they're very easy to test and build and reuse. And sometimes when you need to replace or edit them, they are very easy to do that as well. And because our code is so simple now, I argue that you only need to test the clean name function. You don't need to test the for loop or where you're using it because it is such a simple thing. It's just a for loop with calling something. And so if that you're calling is actually working, then you're pretty sure that it's gonna run perfectly well. Now, where do you place these utility functions? It's a lot easier to remember that utility functions are in utils.py or JS or whatever, than it is to remember that they're in names or whatever it is that they are related to especially if you have many files in the system. The only thing you have to be really vigilant about in this case is that you actually only put utility functions in utils and they're really easy to understand and preferably they are without state. That means that they are pure functions. That means they should not be classes or depending on global variables. If you do that, you can easily put 50 utility functions in a file and call it a day. It's very easy to use and remember, and usually you don't have to change them that often, so merge conflicts do not appear. Alrighty, but let's see, what do I actually have of utility function? Well, in my projects, I usually have two utility uh, functionalities, uh, two places. And the reason is that I have one, which is my common library that I talked about, and I'll show you that. But then I also have the ones that are maybe specific for this project, or I don't feel are fine polished enough to get into my main library. So I'll wait with putting those into my main library. This way I make sure that my main library is filled with good utility functions that are well documented and understandable and made in a particular way. I'll explain a little bit later why. So I have these functions here in my utility library. So let's take, for example, sanitize file name. What it does is that it sanitizes the file name and that's it. It's a very long function that I didn't even make myself. It's one that I copy pasted from uh, somewhere and I just took it in there. And then I have mkdir, which creates a folder and it ignores any sort of mistakes or errors. A lot of times you need to make some sub 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 folders and you don't want there to be any mistakes. Uh, you want it just to work and just 
get going. So I have that one there, I have RMDR. Then I have two particular um, functions here that are to date and to int. But you will see that I actually put uh, default with it. When I do it this way, I force people to think about that, hey, I have to remember that this can actually fail. And if it fails, I have to put a default. So this way, there's no exceptions happening in production. This is a very simple way to make sure that you actually have a little bit more robustness in your uh, non-typed languages, like your dynamically typed languages like Python. I also have is float, is int, and is ip. Very simple functions. Now I have a really big one here called run cron. And what that does is that it runs a function uh, if it's needed and it checks that into a keyword database. So it means this is actually a very beautiful thing because I can use run cron with Redis or with um, a SQLite database or a da uh, Postgres database without any problems. And this way I have a uniform way that I always do it. And this one here doesn't depend on state from the outside, but it depends on the state from the key value uh, database and the function. But it's very easy to test and see and reason about it because you just put in the variables and you know that you always get the same result if you put the same variable in there. I have a lot of other things that just help me, um, but I will not go through those. And I actually have a lot more functionalities in this library, but these are just the base of them. This is just one video in the series of making code great again. So please do take a look at other videos and I'll see you in the next one. That is, of course, if you're subscribed, so don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you there. Cheers.